Okay, so we have few more uh, important signals that we want to cover uh, before wrapping up the review of the signals part of it. So we did point impulse, line impulse, and then we talked about uh, a sampling function and the combination of uh, uh, comb function, uh, how it can be uh, uh, written for the sampling function, right? So now, uh, if you really think about it, there are whole uh, different sets of signals. Several of them were very interesting, but we will stick to those most common ones, which will be repeatedly used in this particular course. Okay. So having said that, let's uh, move on. You're going to see rectangular function, rect function, right? So I'm sure this is the same name it goes when we did 1D, right? Or rather when you did 1D, uh, you should have seen the rect function before. How does it look? Well, you have one axis, right? You have a, a time axis, right? So how will the rectangular function look? Oh, that is my independent variable. And then, so that was my t. So it is 1, right? Over a range, rest of the time it is 0. This is how a, a rectangle function in 1D looks like. So rect function in 2D is a direct extension. In which case, how will it be? Ah, instead of t, now we are going to use or we have started using the, the variables like x and y, the spatial variables, right? Okay. So that means you are going to have rect function is going to have x comma y, two dimensions. And it is going to be having 1. Over what range? Oh, if in 1D it is minus half to half, right? In 2D it has to be spanning an area, right? So it has to be minus half to half in x direction, minus half to half y direction. So if you take the plane, you have a rectangular region, right? So you need to x y oh third dimension right if you have to visualize you need to have the third dimension so i'm not having any color sketch here so i'm just going to shade this and say the shade is value one okay so your rect of x comma y is just to be complete the legend is this represents one okay rest of the places it is zero Clear? So this is your rectangular function. So it's direct extension of 1D. So it's a unit area here, right? This is a unit area. Again, imagine what it can be used for. I think that is the, that is the important, just definition of this is fine. But can you see the powerfulness of this function? Well, we did point, right? We said delta function, point impulse. And uh, what was it used for? Or at least... Uh, we, we said that it is very powerful to do what? In fact, we extended it and said sampling, right? So it is very useful to pick by itself. Definition is there, but it's most useful to pick values of a function f of x comma y. You can pick the value of x, f of x comma y at any location, any point in that space using the delta function. Likewise, here, instead of points, you can pick any area unit area from any location. So you can use this unit area function, rect function to pick any area from function f of x comma y. In the plane of f of x comma y, you can pick wherever you want. So you, are, you, you can move the rect function, right? You can center it and you can have a f of x comma y. This is a 2D space. So there is a function which is there in that plane. I can pick a region of interest, right, or area of interest by using the rect function. What does this mean? Oh, this is offset. So instead of 0, 0, I can move this rectangle to different locations and center it around some arbitrary epsilon and eta, right. I can center it there. Oh, if you center it there, then I can have y cross 
x. So I can have a rectangle of width and height x and y centered around epsilon and eta. Clear? So see the powerfulness. So you can pick areas. So that's where this becomes very useful, right? Mathematically to use this. Okay. So that is one important function. And then another powerful function is this guy. So if you are looking at this and you are thinking, oh, he made a, 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 a typing error, right? It is, why is, I know sign. What is this? Sign C. It's not a typing error. You should immediately recognize this is a, a sync function. You must have heard this in uh, 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 first, you know, um, even signals and systems or first level signal processing, wherever you deal with, uh, you would have heard about this. Sync function. What is a sync function? Clearly by the form you say sync is equal to 1 when x is equal to y equal to 0 kind of tells you already that ah, this is defined otherwise x and y if it comes in denominator and when they are 0 you cannot determine it. So essentially you can already sense that you have a value of 1 at x is equal to y equal to 0 means this x and y are going to be in the denominator. So what is it going to be otherwise, other locations, right? So it is going to be, if you have recognized your sync of theta to be sin theta by theta, right? And if, if you know this form, right, which you should probably know, then you are going to say do the same thing, extend it to two dimensions. So sin pi x, sin pi y by pi square x y. So this is your sync function. How does a sync function look? So in one dimension, I mean it's easier to draw in one dimension. Like if you take one D signal, so I'm going to draw that. But you can, so, uh, you know, start to uh, visualize this in uh, as a two D function as well. So I'm going to just actually not that. Um, sorry, this I'm going to do just one D. Okay. So how does the one D look like? Oh, I have some variable, right? I have to have at origin. I have to have maximum value. Other locations? Oh, it is moving like this. How does that look like? Go right. So on and so forth. So on and so forth. So clear. So this is your sync function. It has a maximum value at the origin and then it asymptotically reduces but it oscillates. It goes both positive and negative. Okay. So that is your sync function and this can be extended to two directions. That is what here sync of x comma y. So if you actually start to imagine this, an uh, easy way to visualize is perhaps what happens if you take this sync function, this is in one direction I drew. So let us say if this is x direction, you pretend draw the other direction also, it is going to be like this, but it is going to be perpendicular to this. So you can already see it is kind of a bell, right, having ripples on those directions. So you can start to imagine that. Okay, uh, is there anything else that uh, you need to brush up? Uh, yeah, sync, you are saying sync is, you know, sign form. So that means it is important that we need to understand basic sinusoidal signals. What is the big deal about sinusoidal signals? Wow, it is very powerful because it is a template signal, that it is a basis. So you could essentially use sinusoids, right? and relate it to a more general exponential so that you could get to your, um, we will, so you could ba basically, uh, you know, under certain circumstance, you could essentially capture any signal or write any other signal any in, in the form of purely sinusoids, a combination of sinusoids, right? So we need to understand what is sinusoids and what is exponentials. You know this, right? So when I say you know this formulation, you may know. What is the exponential? 
and what is sinusoid you might know the formulation and what is the relationship between uh, exponential and sinusoid that also you probably know right it is a direct extension from 1D to 2D e of x comma y is e power j 2 pi times u naught x plus v naught y ok so mathematically it is fine because one dimension you would have already uh, again instead of x and y you would have been more familiar with the t right time so you would have already seen uh, exponential function to be e power j 2 pi f t right or e power j omega you know angular frequency and your linear so omega is equal to 2 pi f so you would have already seen that right so if you extend that to here analogously instead of t you have x and y instead of 2 pi f t t is replaced by the spatial variables so what should u naught and v naught correspond to it better correspond to it is an analog of whatever you had in your one dimension what you had f t f is a frequency so what is the relationship between uh, frequency and u naught that you see here or a v naught that you see here oh that is a frequency where you are talking about number of oscillations per time so the units there in 1D that you would have learnt is cycles per second or whatever time units right that is your frequency whereas here it is, is also supposed to be frequency due to the analogous nature but this what is this frequency oh this is an oscillation but there is an oscillation in x direction there is an oscillation in y direction u naught is in x direction v naught in is y direction so that means this is oscillations per length dimension right because x is length direction y is length direction so if x and y are in millimeters then you are going to have number of cycles u naught is going to be number of cycles in the per millimeter in the x direction likewise v naught is going to be number of cycles number of oscillations in the y direction so the meaning of frequency is same right from 1d we extended to 2d 1d the independent variable typically you would have been exposed to time and therefore you 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 take it for granted oh the frequency there is so many cycles per second whereas here the mathematically it's the same representation but the context and the meaning is slightly different because the units are different okay uh, this is fine is there anything else is it absolutely clear if it is absolutely clear if you at this point in time you think is absolutely clear to you then let us do one small exercise right when you read this take pen paper draw I am going to do the easy one you are going to try out the difficult one so I am going to do the easy one which is one dimension oh what happens if I have a sinusoid of one hertz or one cycle per second right oh how do I visualize it right how do I uh, visualize it how do I plot it right how, how do I visualize it I plot it so I know how to so I have a cycle per second I said one hertz so let so I am making my life easy here right so I have one cycle per second so this is t axis one second ah, so I have drawn sinusoid of one hertz I have drawn here some amplitude right so one does not matter so now I am going to tell you have a paper pen ready how do I draw right how do I draw a sinusoid in two dimensions ok think about it that is what we will do I will not rob you of the surprise so you, you think about it before that uh, let let us just make it little more explicit you can write exponentials and sinus right you have the you know the relationship between uh, exponential and how do you write it in terms of cosine and sine right it is a e power j is cos plus j sine right so you can write that and therefore you you see the relationship between exponential and sinusoid so you can 
by combination you can get sinusoid in terms of exponentials cosinusoid in terms of exponential right exponential e power i x in one dimension probably you would have even you know memorize these formulas e power i x plus e power minus i x e power i x minus e power minus i x right you will get cosine or sine right so you can get that so similar things you can do here so the objective here is exponential is very powerful because you can represent one or the other right you don't worry about the face you can have sine or cosine both are so getting back to what we wanted to do if you are very comfortable you know all this relationship between sinusoid exponential and i made my life easy by plotting oh i know how to visualize a sinusoid of one hertz can you plot right i shouldn't say plot can you visualize because i'm talking about two dimension you can plot but uh, we, we saw the difficulty right so can you visualize a uh, or a represent a two dimensional sinusoid okay i think you have enough time hopefully you started thinking the first thing is after this you should start to question me and say look how do i you, you are telling me plot a two dimensional sinusoid but what is the frequency you are there are two variables in one dimension there is only one variable and so you said 1 hertz it is taken for granted it is the time axis there is a cycles per second but when you have two variables right when you have two variables x comma y what frequency are you talking about is it the oscillations in x direction oscillation in y direction how what do you want me to do that question should come to you if that is clear then rest of it is straight forward so before uh, revealing the combinations that you can you know uh, represent i i really wish you you try it once and then see what's going to come okay so what i'm going to show next is typical example of sinusoids with different frequencies how how do you represent them so a image of two dimensional sinusoids is what i'm going to show okay so this is an image of two dimensional sinusoids so at the face of it when you look at it it looks like okay we understand but let's let's spend some more time to really see if we can understand or can we read out this in english what this is representing so recall the definition what is the definition oh frequency i mean the you know when when i have cycles oscillations per x that is my u not or frequency along the x dimension if i have oscillations in y direction that is my v not or the spatial frequency spatial frequency in x direction spatial frequency in your y direction so if you look at the first image for example what is varying which direction it is varying and how do you calculate the frequency can you comment what frequency components are there in this signal a very rudimentary way to look at it is oh i know the definition let me brute force let's say for example i take one one line right i break the problem from two dimension to one dimension so if i plot plot this if i take white to be positive and black to be negative right if i do that if i take along this line the values will be like this this is one cycle clear so that means if this direction is x direction spatially that means there is an oscillation of one cycle in whatever unit say so let's for example let's take this as you know 1 cm just to be realistic i'm putting 1 cm so that means 
I have one cycle in one centimeter. Clear? So the frequency is there is a frequency in x direction which is u naught and that is one cycle per centimeter. Correct? That is the brute force interpretation, right? Clear? So, I could see that from here also. So, that means if I take the profile here, it is still going to be like this. If I take the profile here, it is still going to be like this. So, what does this say? Oh, irrespective of where I am in my y direction, irrespective of where I am in my y direction, right? I am going to have only oscillation in x direction. Y direction, there is no oscillation, right? Y direction, if I take in y direction, if I plot, it is going to be whatever this white value, the same value is going to be there. If I take this line in y direction, oh, that is going to be some negative value, whatever it is, right? There is no variation. What does that mean? That means there is no oscillation, means zero frequency. So, clearly you can see that what do we mean by oscillations per unit length? That is your spatial frequency. So, you have a spatial frequency of 1 in the x direction, you have a spatial frequency of 0 in your y direction. So, quickly can you run through the next two? What do you think it will be? Ah, now it is straight, all of them are vertical bands, so same logic. If I take profile here, there will be oscillation. So, there is oscillation in the x direction, but if I take profile like that, I do not have any oscillation. So, it is very similar to the first block that we covered. There is no oscillation in the y direction, right, in both these images. Whereas, in the x direction, here I saw one cycle, here I can see two cycles, here I can see two, three, four cycles. Clear? So, clearly you have u naught and v naught or the spatial frequencies. Now, I hope you get the feel for what do we mean by frequency, spatial frequency. I mean, it is actually straightforward extension from 1D, but to visualize this and get the appreciation is already not trivial. Okay? But mathematically, it might be trivial, but to get a feel for it, uh, you should have that joy, right? I mean, that I hope you, you will see. Uh, you enjoy, if you get that, you experience that, good luck. Okay? Uh, but this is the thing. So, if you do this, immediately if you understand this, you should natural inquisitiveness, you should look at the bottom and you say, wow, this is not vertical, right? But it is at some angle. So, what could be, how do I comment on this? Maybe you can go from here to here, you can do another thought exercise. What happens if I have, that is left to you to work out. What happens if you have no oscillations in the x direction, but some oscillations in the y direction. Okay. So, please do try yourself. u naught is equal to 0. v naught is going to be 1, 2 and 4. How does that look? Clear? So, you try that on your own. So, what does this mean? Oh, this looks slanting, right? And the angles change. So, a smart way to do is, oh, I will interpret it as basic as possible, right? Oh, if I take y axis, just now we covered how many cycles are there. Oh, there is a black, there is a white. So, there is full cycle that goes over the black and you know, comes positive and goes over white. So, there is one cycle in y direction. So, your v naught is 1. So, if I take my x direction, oh, I see 1, 2, 3, 4. I see 4, right, 4 cycles. Oh, so that means this has both oscillations in both directions, u naught and v naught both are non-zero. 
So depending on which is fast or which is slow, right, which frequency is high or which frequency is low, the slant can change. So for example, here we talked it's 1 and 4, right. Here if you look, it's 1 and 2 and 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 2 and 4. Likewise, here, what it is? Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's 4 and 4, right? So clear. So 4 and 1, x direction is 4, y direction is 1. So your u0 is 4, v0 is 1. x direction is 4, u0, v direction is 2. So v0 is 2. And then you have 4 and 4. Clear? So, so much for a simple sinusoidal oscillation. So, now you can start to see when you look at an image, when we talk about spatial frequency, right? You can already see how do I look at an image and kind of eyeball it and expect what kind of frequencies will be there. Okay, so that is something that you, you should train yourself. Okay, before we complete uh, the signals part of it, we need to just touch upon two uh, characteristics of the signals, certain signals which can be very helpful to work with. So, separable signals. What is separable signals? So, so far what we have is f of x, y. That is what we are interested, two-dimensional signal. But then, you know, we are lazy, right? I mean, we are always lazy. If we know something, we don't want to. And if we know how to use something, right? We don't want to learn something new. If, if I can make use of what I know to solve a problem, we will do only that, right? So, f of x comma y is a two-dimensional signal, but I am telling, you know what, I have done a lot of work in one-dimensional, I have taken courses, I have done so many problems, you know, I, I have all the solutions ready for uh, one dimension. This two-dimension, how do I now, uh, you know, look at it? So, if it turns out the signal f of x, y can be broken into, say, f1 of x and f2 of x. Sorry, f to a y, right? That means you can separate this two-dimensional signal into two one-dimensional signal. If you can do that, this kind of signals are called as separable signals. So we like to work with separable signals for the reason I mentioned, right? Because we can split it into two one-dimensional signal, and I know I can solve. I know how to work with it. Okay. So quickly, if you can recall, can you gather some examples from what we have done so far? Can you see uh, if you can recognize some of the functions we covered uh, earlier? Which of them are, say, separable signals? Right? Okay, we covered rectangle. Do you think rectangle could be a separable signal? Oh, yes, area, right? Two dimension, it is area. One dimension, we saw the rect. What is the area? Length into breadth. So, I could have two one-dimensional signal, one with the length side, the other side the breadth side. So, rectangular function is, you can separate. What is the other function? That sync function, right? So, some of the signals that you already saw, right? If I know how to work with sync function in one dimension, I would rather break the two-dimensional sync function into two one-dimensional sync function and work with it. Okay, so that is separable functions. Periodic signals, I shouldn't even you know, spend time. You know, we, you know, by this time in one dimension, you, you would have learnt about periodic signals. So, how do we extend that to two dimension? Oh, in one dimension, recall what was the idea of periodic signal. If you have a function, say for example, uh, f of t, right? The value remains same after every period. If the time period is capital T, then you have f of t is same as f of t plus capital T. So, every time or n capital T, that means every, uh, uh, you know, fundamental period is capital T. So, it repeats every time. So, if you know we, the, the value, if you know the function uh, of, of the signal within this time period, one time period, then you know it for infinity, right? You know how, how it repeats. 
So you have to extend that to two dimension. How do we extend it to two dimension? Only catches f of x comma y. This needs to be same question. Periodic where? Right? Oh, I have two dimensions, so it has to be periodic in both directions. So I can say f of x comma y is same whether you take f of x uh, plus some period, right? You can call this capital X or let us put capital X just because we use this for the rect function, right? Uh, comma y, this better be same as f of x comma y plus capital Y. That means it is periodic both in x direction and y direction with the here we call it what spatial period if you want to call it right being capital X in x direction capital Y in y direction clear. So quickly if you recall we have any examples that we have covered so far well we had sampling function right comb function you already saw there it was at delta we, we actually used this x before right so all of those are your periodic function of course just now whatever we covered sinusoid only difference is in the uh, here the frequency is 1 over u naught is right your frequency 1 over capital x and sorry 1 over capital x and 1 over capital Y that will be your V naught the frequencies will be inverse of the time period or sorry your spatial period. Okay, So I think we will stop here the next uh, review is going to be on 2D systems and uh, we are good to go to individual systems uh, just after that or maybe few lectures after that. Okay, We will stop here.